So, we are going to get into this how WWE should have booked the invasion part two. I left my good tripod at Mamba Jumbo's house last night, which can then coincidentally is her nickname for me. But listen, so if the camera looking a little crooked, it's because I'm using my broken tripod right now. But still, enjoy the video. Let's get this on. Sure, she liked the fact that I left it there. I mean, I got to come back to get it. Survivor Series time, his contract was up and he was ready to come work for 
the WWF anyway. Ric Flair comes out, cuts a promo on how WCW was much better than WWF, you know, starting all the old NWA days even, you know, really get that heritage in. Then finally we have Invasion, which looks like this. So Lance Storm beats Chris Jericho for the IC title, Booker T and DDP beat the Dudleys for the Tag Team Championships, Ric Flair beats Vince McMahon, and the NWO beat Triple H, Rock God and Austin. Damn. Because Triple H switches sides. Now I know I promise no sloppy betrayals. This is really? the only one. Scouts on it. Because it's the only one that makes sense. Why would anyone leave WWF for WCW after WCW just ran itself into the ground? You know, it's the, com the company couldn't survive by itself. So why would they chance their odds on an invading WCW? Instead, the only reason Triple H leaves because he was being mistreated. By Vince, by his family, who mm. never delivered on any of his promises. So Triple H says, next night on Raw, do you know why I did what I did? Because you know the only wrestling family I actually have? The only guys who stuck with me through everything? The only guys who never let me down? It's the click. So with saying. his best buddies, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, Triple H officially joins NWO. And X-Pac completes the set. He brings the light heavyweight title mm. over to WCW, renames it the cruiserweight title, and splits off from X-Factor. That tension has been building ever since X Factor lost their titles. Invasions just happened, and if it's anything like the, frankly, much worse invasion pay per view that actually happened, this will rake in serious coin. Okay, the invasion pay per view, the bad version, raked in $10 million just by itself. So if we can get that, then I think we've got a bit more money to throw around, and we can maybe buy out one more contract. And that contract will be. Goldberg. And trust me, yeah, Goldberg is expensive, but he's worth it. Yeah. So the Invasion pay-per-view was a great night for WCW, and Eric just can't resist gloating. He gets all his guys together with all their new gold. We've got the light heavyweight title, now the cruiserweight title. We've got the intercontinental title, the tag team title. Bischoff brings out Triple H. He brings out Shane. He says, we've got I'm my favorite Triple H. prodigal sons right here. I've got After the quad injury. everything I've ever wanted. The problem is... I don't want half your company. I want the whole thing. everything. So he brings out Vince McMahon and says, Vince, I've got a proposition for you. You think you can beat WCW? How about this? Survivor Series, five on five elimination tag match, winner take all. The leader of the winning team, they control the WWF. So Vince McMahon is like, um, no, that's a stupid plan. Why would I risk my company? And Eric says, I thought he might say that. And then suddenly Triple H turns around and pedigrees Shane McMahon. After all, they've got everything they wanted from the guy, so they punish Vince McMahon's son in front of him. And Vince, because he's slowly turning baby face, is like, uh, get your hands off my child, thanks. So Shane McMahon is left lying in the middle of the ring. Eric makes everyone else leave, makes everyone leave the ring, and then just as Shane McMahon is rising to his feet. He turns around, and guess who slid in the ring? Goldberg. Bam! 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 Goldberg spears Shane McMahon out of his trousers. And he picks him up, jackhammers him, busts him open oh, with shit. right and left. Goldberg just keeps hitting him and hitting him and hitting him until eventually Vince says, all right, you've got your match. Just please stop murdering my son. And Eric says, thanks Vince, smug old grin. The final image of the night is Vince cradling his bloody boy. Baby face turn confirmed. So we've got Survivor Series, mm. that card looks like this. At the end of the night, mm. Team WCW win. It can be by shenanigans, if you want, I don't think it should be, because after all, WCW will finally have established itself as a force to be reckoned with, like bad guys that can get stuff done, which they never were in the old invasion angle. JR and Heyman are like, what the hell is happening now? What do we even tune into tomorrow? Is it going to be Monday Night Raw? Are we going to be WWF anymore? What is going to happen? The world as we know it is over. The World Wrestling Federation as we know it is over. Next night, the fans tune in in droves to see WCW Monday Night. That'd be crazy. Same old title. <laughs> to open the night, and it looks just like Nitro 
used to look. You know, yeah. the WCW ring. The Titan Tron is gone and replaced. Everything is WCW except for JR and Heyman. So Eric Bischoff gets to the ring and says, Well, oh, oh you going to see some changes around here. So Bischoff's in the ring. He brings out a battered Vince McMahon and tells him, You're fired. <laughs> he announces some changes to the calendar. It's going to be Monday Nitro and Thursday Night Raw. But Bischoff tells the fans not to worry. He's not going to change everything. You know, he's going to let JR and Heyman still call the action on commentary. But then he says to Heyman, Heyman, I like your moxie, kid. You're doing a good job. Tell you what, I'm going to double your pay. I'm going to give you twice as much as JR has because you know what? I value you. So Heyman basically turns heel commentator and starts siding with WCW mm. for every single match. Because let's be honest, heel Heyman is much, much, much better than face Lawler. I love Jerry the King Lawler to bits, but ever since he turned face, it never quite I never liked him either way. Back. You can bring Jerry Lawler back, absolutely, but just have him be an on-air personality. He can be a manager. He'd be a great heel manager. So we keep JR and Heyman on commentary, and Bischoff is saying, well, it doesn't just change there, because, like, I'm not going to fire anyone, guys. That's not the way Eric Bischoff does business. I'm a smart businessman, okay? Look, yeah, I fired Vince, but I'm not going to fire any of the WWF superstars. That's just bad for business. They're just going to go to my competitors. The WWF guys, you can stay. You're probably going to have a bad time, but everyone can stay. Because after all, Uncle Eric's here to make the company better. And speaking of making things better, he announces that he has the power to cancel Armageddon, and instead he books in Starcade. WCW's answer to WrestleMania, and he says it's right. going to be the most stacked card you can possibly imagine. I'm going to book you the best matches, because after all, I'm better in charge. Goldberg will punish the Giant. He refuses to call him the Big Show. He only calls him the Giant. Angle versus Flair. Clean living and integrity versus the dirtiest player in the game. Mm. You're The Rock going up against Hulk Hogan, and you've got Stone Cold Steve Austin defending the WWF title against Kevin Nash. See, everybody? Mm. What a card. Uncle Eric cares. Smug old grin. So the weeks progress before Starcade, and Uncle Eric says that he cares, but it's clearly obvious from the way he books things that he's favouring the WCW guys. He weights everything against the WWF guys against their favour. He repeatedly goes against not just WWF guys, but ex WCW guys like Chris Jericho, Chris Benoit, The Big Show, all the guys who left him, and he's basically running amok. So a few weeks before Starcade, he stands in the middle of the ring and says, No force on earth can stop this invasion, no man alive. Lights go out. Oh shit, Then we see on the Titantron some creepy images of graves and smoke. Oh, and oh, oh, Undertaker. Little girls or something like that. Yeah. And then a creepy yeah. voice says, he's back. Down. Um, out comes <laughs> The Undertaker, led by Paul Bearer. He's returned to his dead man persona. And JR bigs it up. He is the spirit of the WWF. He has returned to haunt. Who the WCW. fuck is Sting? Is Sting? Undertaker grabs Go. Eric and hits him with a tombstone pile driver. Next week, the final show before Starcade, Eric realizes, yeah, he can't beat the Undertaker by himself. So instead, Sting, he man. needs to bring in a similar creature of the night. He brings in Sting. Now I know, <laughs> uh, I know, we have a lot of problems with Sting because Sting refused to come to the company because the way they treated WCW guys. But seeing as this is a less ego-driven angle than the Invasion angle was, hopefully we can coax him over to the WWF. So Sting comes out in eerie darkness, out comes The Undertaker, Sting points the bat at The Undertaker, Undertaker... The card of which looks like this. Goldberg beats The Big Show, Angle beats Flair, The Rock beats Hogan, The Undertaker beats Sting, and Kevin Nash, with Scott Hall's help, beats Stone Cold Steve Austin. We have a new WWF champion, and Austin celebrates this by Stone Cold stunnering everyone in the building. Stone Cold goes up against the entire NWO, beating on all of them. The next pay-per-view is sold out. That's right, the Royal Rumble is cancelled. Boo! Nuclear heat on Uncle Eric, who thinks, hey, I'm just doing what I think is best for business, guys. <laughs> Austin's going up against the entire NWO, so the match is made. Austin versus Scott Hall versus Kevin Nash versus Hulk Hogan. A fatal four-way for the WWF Championship and sold out. 
Meanwhile, Undertaker sets his sight on Triple H for betraying the company. After all, The Undertaker is the biggest company man of them all. And the dirtiest player in the game, Ric Flair, challenges the most electrifying man in sports entertainment, The Rock, to see who can be the most charismatic man in the history of professional okay. wrestling. Sold out, the card looks like this. Sting beats Kurt Angle, Triple H beats The Undertaker, Ric Flair beats The Rock, and Hulk Hogan pins Nash after Austin stunners him, beginning dissension in the NWO. The Click and the NWO are in fighting amongst themselves whilst Hogan defends his actions in winning the WWF title. The Rock comes out and says, WCW may have won the battle, but they have not won the war. There's still a war going on between WWF and WCW, and a war needs a very special kind of match. A war needs war games. So we've got the four-man mm. team of Team WWF, The Rock, Austin, The Undertaker, and Kurt Angle, versus a team of Hogan's choosing, and because of all this infighting, Hogan doesn't pick Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Instead, the team is Hulk Hogan, Triple H, Booker T, and DDP. That all goes down, not a no way out, but a super brawl, and the card looks like this. So the War Games match ends with Team WWF finally victorious. They finally win a big one. Everyone's in the ring, and then suddenly the four WWF guys lock in four submissions on Team WCW at the same time. Austin has Hogan in a million dollar dream. The Rock has Booker T in a sharpshooter. The Undertaker has a triangle choke on Triple H, and Kurt Angle locks the ankle lock <laughs> on DDT. DDT is the first one to say he gives up Team WWF conquer at war games. The click are getting worse and worse, they're still infighting, so Triple H brings in the daddy of the clip to sort it out. He brings in Sean Raw, Michaels. Sean Michaels. He wants Shawn Michaels to get everyone around and sing Kumbaya, but they refuse. And in fact, Michaels reprimands them. He reprimands Hall, Nash, and Triple H. He says, you guys left. You guys turned your back on the WWF. This was your home. These were the people that made you. What's wrong with you? And Triple H says, well, yeah, you've got a point. But uh, to propose a counter-argument, kicks him in the gut, pedigrees him. Wow. He wants Hall, Nash, and x Park to help him beat up Shawn Michaels, but they refuse, because look at us. What's happening here? Hall, Nash, and x Park leave the ring. NWO disbands. And Triple H says, go then. Go, I don't need you. I'm one of the WCW's biggest stars. He turns around into a super kick from Shawn Michaels. Okay. Things are going very bad for Eric Bischoff. NWO has disbanded. Hogan is basically playing his own game. A lot of titles have gone back to WWF, and the WWF kicked ass at Super Bowl. He screams, I am in charge. I will have order. I am in charge. Then suddenly, no chance. Success with your gut. What would you skip a cheap foo stall? Pitty butter kick about the stud. Bits of man. Yeah. He comes out. With his swag I don't know what the fuck they were saying. Yes, who's back? Vince takes a microphone and says, Did you really think I was going to go away, Eric? Turns out that Linda McMahon, Stephanie McMahon, they sold their stock in the company to Vince in order to bring him back. And they joined him in the entrance ramp. Finally, the McMahons are united. All four of them, the owners of the WWF, they are the WWF family. They walk down to the ring. Vince says, You can beat McMahon down but you cannot kill a McMahon. From behind them out comes every WWF guy that Eric has ever mistreated, and they act as a barrier, making sure that no WCW guys can save Eric. The McMahons come down, and they kick Eric Bischoff's ass. They kick his ass long enough until he agrees to put the company back on the line. It's all gonna come to a head at WrestleMania. And for WrestleMania, Bischoff sort of said himself, look, I mean, we made a huge deal with the venue last year, this company can't back out. We have to do WrestleMania. So the company is on the line. There are 11 matches booked, and whoever gets the most wins, wins. the company. The last night before WrestleMania, the last Raw, the main event is an epic shoot promo between Eric Bischoff and Vince McMahon. They go 20 minutes, and they just unleash mm. all of the horrible things they did to each other in the Monday Night Wars. Eric's shady business practices, Vince keeping young stars down. They unleash on each other like Paul Heyman did on Vince McMahon. It is a shoot promo for the ages and it sort of writes a line 
underneath the Monday Night Wars. So finally, we have WrestleMania, and the card looks like this. Edge wins a 20-man battle royale for immunity. We have a WWF guy win that in order to be a red herring. Jeff Hardy wins the Cruiserweight title, now the light heavyweight title again, from x Park in a fatal four-way. Billy Kidman wins the European title. Ric Flair wins the IC title. Booker T and DDP beat the Dudleys in a two out of three falls match. Vince McMahon beats Eric Bischoff. The Outsiders retain their tag team titles versus Big Show and Kane. Shawn Michaels beats Triple H in a no holds barred match. The Undertaker beats Goldberg in a streak versus streak match. Sting beats The Rock in an icon versus icon match. And it's capped off with legend versus legend, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Hulk Hogan. And everything's tied up oh, five shit. Okay. to five. It all comes down to Hulk Hogan versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, both faces of their generation, both faces of their company. In the middle of the ring, Stone Cold hits a stunner. One, two, three. He beats Hulk Hogan, regains the WWF Championship, and WWF win back control of the company. And WrestleMania 18 ends with JR screaming, tune in tomorrow for Monday Night Raw. And it begins with an address from Vince McMahon, and he calls out Eric Bischoff, and he says, look, over the last few months, you fired me. That's fine, I understand business is business. But you didn't fire any of my guys. You know what, I respect that. I respect that head for business. So, I'm not gonna fire any of your guys. He says, together, we're gonna make you. WWF the strongest wrestling company it can be. The best of WWE, and the best of WCW. He and Bischoff shake hands. The handshake that ends the Monday Night Raw. I love and a nice swirls over By making Eric Bischoff the general manager. Because as Vince says, he'd rather have a son of a bitch working for him than working against him. And Eric looks down the camera and smiles that smug old <laughs> So guys, uh, invading guys, how did I do? You're good, <sighs> well, man. Against all the meager odds I threw at you, you still managed to persevere and push back the wrestling with regret invasion. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe that I, an outsider, lost this confrontation that you yourself helped put together. Why does this all sound so familiar? But you know what? This isn't over. That awkward moment when your invasion angle flops harder than a fat chick at the beach. Okay, <laughs> and what about you guys at home? Did I book it better, or did I just bring in a staff? Booked it better! To help artificially raise the stakes of sugarcoat we booking. Wink. Let us know in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, and make sure you follow Brian Zane from Wrestling With Regret and Grim from Grim's Toy Show. Huge thanks to those guys for helping out. And you can follow everyone on Twitter here. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com. Happy New Year. We'll see you soon. WWF of WWE hired this man. This man deserves a job. And you know, last time I was like, you know, thinking that you were going to throw in the what, what, do, 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 but you didn't because he wasn't around then. Forgot about that. He was ruthless aggression there. He was a little bit later. I forgot about that. So we made it through two parts of one of thing without John Cena, which I appreciate. So anyway, you did a great job, phenomenal job. By the sites, make sure you go subscribe to this man's channel. Make sure you post all your comments down below. Let me know what you all thought. And if you enjoyed my reaction, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. And if you didn't, you're fired. <laughs> One million subscribers. Woo!